Um, on behalf of Power Vested in Me, he, he's coming in all. right now. So he's coming on. All right. Hey, I'm not even going to call the meeting to order then. <laughs> Tommy, you just missed it. I was about to call the meeting to order. Ah, well, listen, I love advice. Thank you for that. Sorry, I logged in and Zoom went through this whole updating process. So there you go. That's fun. Um, how's everybody doing? Good. Great. Nice. Me and Corey are matching today. You like that, Corey? Oh, if it helps out, uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for everybody being here tonight. Uh, we'll go ahead and call the meeting of the Board of Appeals to order. Um, let's uh, jump right in. Is there anything uh, right out of the gates that uh, anybody has before we get into like regular business stuff that we need to touch base about? I, I do. Did. Oh, okay. But you can go first. That's okay. I was just going to say you weren't here, but I did. I just wanted to assure you that I went through the training video twice. I took copious notes and I feel I am ready to learn and I'm ready to contribute tonight. Okay. Yay. So thank you. <laughs> well, I love that. Well, first of all, that was going to be one of the things. I know uh, there are people from the community on. Um, I apologize. We're going to do a little housekeeping right here at the beginning because I have a work thing that came up. So I'm going to have to uh, leave a little early at 6.15. Noel, I don't know if you saw my no. email, but you can take over from there, hopefully. I appreciate that. Um, but there was some stuff we needed to take care of at the end. I'd like to take care of it now. One, uh, first of all, welcome, Mrs. Dorf. I was going to say Alderdorf, but again- You could say former Alderdorf. You could say former, Barbara, whatever. Well, I'm going to say, if it's okay, Barbara, welcome to the team. We appreciate you having you. First meeting, thank you for doing the training. So it's fun to have you on board and get new uh, some new life in here. So thank you for being here. The other thing uh, we were going to take care of at the end, but because I wanted to make sure I was here for it, uh, we do have a, a board member that is going to be uh, uh, leaving us. And so it's going to be that this person's last, uh, last me my understanding, last meeting today. And that person is Don Carlson. Is that correct, Don? That is correct. Hey, listen. Um, I think it is super important that those that are on the call, this recorded call, um, that everybody knows Don has served on this board since 2006. Yeah. Is that career? correct? It's probably 2007, but correct. 15 Somewhere years. Now. 15 years. He's been uh, volunteering his time for this community uh, to come and listen to the community's uh, needs. A lot of that was served as, as chair running the whole thing. And so I think it's critical that, that those that are on the call, those that are part of the city, I know Paul might want to say something here as well, but uh, unbelievable thank you for your service to the city of Green Bay and everybody. Uh, 15 years is a very, very long time to do this. And it's a lot of stuff to wade through. And you probably know more about city code than you ever thought you would. But uh, I appreciate it. Me and Tom Hoy, I think are probably the, the longest now people mm -hmm. besides you. So the fact that I'm a, a tenured veteran is uh, crazy to me. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to make sure we acknowledge that. Paul, if you want to say anything, anybody else want to jump in here and say something? We were going to do it at the end, but I think it's critical that I wanted to be here for this since I have to jump off early. So on behalf of me and the board, thank you very much for your service. Uh, it's been awesome um, serving with you in, in my short time. It's been my pleasure. Thank you, Tommy. Very welcome. Paul, you got anything? Yeah, I just want to thank Di. I've been working with him for several years. I think I go back to about 2008 when I started with the board. But I want to let Don know that we have a certificate of appreciation from the mayor's office that we'll be getting out to you. And we just want to, again, thank you for your service uh, to our community. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Any other board members want to say anything? Excellent leadership, Don. Thanks much. You're welcome, Tom. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you, Don. Don, even though I haven't been on the board, I certainly have attended the meetings and I always appreciated hearing your point of view. And now that I really have a deeper understanding of what's involved, holy cow, you did a great <laughs> job. There is so much involved in this. I did, had no idea. So thank you for your service. You're welcome. Thank you, Barb. <clears throat> Thank you, Don. Thank I really appreciate it. And uh, the very few months I've been here, uh, it's uh, it's been uh, it's been great to watch it. Thank you, sir. Good. Wish I could have had a chance to meet you in person, Steve. But <laughs> such is life. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, listen, you, we're going to call you up when we need an alternate alternate. <laughs> you know, get you in. I think older older Sawyer wants to say something too. Uh, I'd also like to piggyback on what everybody else said. Uh, you know, Don, I've known you for uh, quite a few years too, and you've been very professional and very thorough. You know, I've I've bragged to other uh, other folks in the city that the Board of Appeals, I feel, is was really just a great, fair group that really looked at issues very closely and very carefully. And uh, I appreciate your your service very much. Thank you. Thank you. All uh, right. so like, what about Paul Newmeyer retiring? Can we throw say anything about that? Wait, what? What? Yeah, go ahead, Paul. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna square you now. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say that towards the end of the meeting. I didn't oh, sorry. I blew it. Yeah, oh, so I, I'm gonna retire in June of this year, and this will be my last meeting with the board. Wait, oh, tonight? Oh, wow. Well, you can't talk to me about Don and then not talk about you. That's <laughs> oh, crazy. Wow. What? Yeah, well, it's not about me. It's about Don, so. But you've been, <laughs> how long have you been in your role? You said 2008? 22 years. Well, with the oh, city, it was years. 30 years, yeah. yeah. That's a long time. Paul and yeah, I Paul started, Paul and on, the I started on the same day, yeah. Well, we I can't know we're near retirement, Paul. I don't know what's going on with you. <laughs> I you thought must, Paul was in his late 40. than me. I thought I thought I was the same age as Paul. He looks yeah. so young, man. I know. Look at him go. Wow! Congrats, <laughs> man. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. And well, kudos. That was a good issue, dude. Yeah. All right, kudos thanks. to Alderman Stoyer for uh, referencing Dale Preston back in the day there by <laughs> saying he squared Paul. So uh, you squared guys are gonna, yeah. you're gonna have to fill me in on uh, uh, <laughs> uh, all that stuff later. But now I feel horrible that I'm leaving the meeting early. Like I'm missing out on all this stuff. This is so bad. We have to like give a get together and like a formal goodbye and thank you for for you guys. Seriously, I would love that. Uh, if you guys are open to that, maybe we can organize it through email um, so we don't delay the meeting anymore. But Paul, thank you for your service and the job that you've done and helping us get on board and people like me getting up to speed and organizing trainings and everything, you know, and listening to the feedback the board's given and and um, you know it's been a, it's been a pleasure working with you as well and and. Um, just all the changes, little changes you've been willing to make. And since my short time, you know, on the board, even as a business owner in the community, being able to call you and say, Hey, I want to put a banner on my building. And you're so quick to respond and give me the information that I need. So, um, man, that's, I'm, I'm just like shocked right now. That's awesome. Good for you, man. <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs> all right, let's get to this. All right. Um, so I, uh, roll call. I see uh, everybody's here. We'll skip the kind of formalized thing. Steven, you'll be able to jump in as an alternate when I pop off, but we do have the five uh, voting members to start. Um, again, I'm here probably it's about 6.10, 6.15, and then I'll have to, 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 to leave there. Um, before we get into all the other formal stuff, do we have anybody that looked over the thing and uh, uh, needs to abstain from any voting on uh, any of the items that we have in front of us? No. No. Okay, great. Um, was any... I went to you, two properties, the one on Clay Street. Okay, that's the next question. Anybody uh, go out to the property? So Tom did, Stephen. Sometimes you do. Barbara, you did good. Thank I you. I went to all. I went to all of them. And uh, for as far as the next question, one of the items was in the backyard. So what I did was went up to the front door. I introduced myself. I said I could not have an ex parte communication. The person was very quiet. I was very quiet, but I asked permission to go into their backyard and, and to look at where the pool would, was located, and I identified that in the waterway. Um, the other one the properties I went to, but I could see those from the front. So taking it seriously, guys, going to visit those properties. Okay. I love it, Barbara. That's awesome. Thank you very much. And Tom, you went to, you said? The two on Clay Street, yes. Got it. Thank you. Anybody else visit the properties? Yeah, I went to all of them except for uh, Ogden Woods because it was in the backyard. I, I didn't have Barbara's foresight to knock the door and ask. So. <laughs> I love it. Already, but I did look at the other ones. She's already adding uh, some good energy to the group here. I love it. Um, all right. Did uh, that? You know, she answered the question, which is the next question. Did anybody speak to anybody uh, about these variances? No. Okay, no. great. So we got that stuff out of the way. Um, let's get to item C on our agenda approval of the agenda. Is there any changes or anything people need to make to the agenda before we approve it? If not, I'll take a motion. Move to approve. Second. All right, we've got a motion to by uh, Noel and a second by Barbara to approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Okay, great. That's done. Um, approval of the minutes of last month's meeting. Um, any changes or uh, edits that need to be made there that anybody saw? If not, motion. Move to approve. Thank you, Barbara. Second. Thank you, Don. There he gets in there. Yeah. All right. Uh, all those in favor of approving the uh, the minutes from last uh, month, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. So that's done there. Great. Now we have the regular business, election of officers. I'll need a little guidance through this. Uh, it's my first time doing that. Is that just something we basically formally go through what we've already decided and make it official on the record? Well, we do this once a year by the bylaws of the board. So um, again, depending on the time frame, maybe you want to delay this uh, to the end of the meeting or to another time. But um, typically, we do this once a year to be uh, on schedule, so to speak. Do we want to have a larger bit of discussion around that, or are we comfortable with where? I mean, I'm and that's me, right, the chair. I would I would so, move that Tommy Everman um, be the chair for this committee. I'll second. Oh, on this way. Thanks, Don. All right, we have a motion and a second uh, on the floor for me to stay as the chair uh, for the time being here. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody oppose? All right, cool. That's done. And we have Noel currently serving as vice chair, and I will motion to keep you all. Noel. You know, hey, before you do that, you know, we've got a new member here who is like done training and like going to visit folks. And um, I'm wondering if, if if maybe Barb would like to st step into the role of vice chair. Not that I don't, don't, you know. Um, You've been vice serve. for like three, three I months. I know, I know, but I'm just saying. I mean, you know, no, I would not want to take it away from you. I'm very comfortable chairing meetings and being a vice chair of meetings. So, of course, I would do that. However, I feel that you would deserve that role more than I would at oh, this point no. because you are, um, you know, much more, I guess, proficient in this area than yeah, I am. I'm not I'm not looking to add anything to my resume. So, I mean, it, if 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 there's any, you know, anything you want out of it, I'd, I'd gladly relinquish it. Just saying to any of you. Otherwise, I'll take it. Any any further discussion? I move that Noel Halverson remain as vice chairman. Second. I second that. Oh, Barb seconded. Okay, we'll get, we'll get a motion by Don and a second by Barbara. Uh, any other discussion around that? All right, let's take a vote. All those in favor of Noel remaining vice chair for the time being, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Noel, it's you and me, buddy. We're in the All queue right. together, buddy. All right. Let's go. All right, good. That's out of the way. Good job, everybody. All right, let's jump into this. So before we get into, I always kind of like to give a little overview for those that are in the community that are here. This is a Board of Appeals. We're not elected officials. We're appointed by the mayor. We're all volunteering our time, um, and we're here to basically listen to uh, each individual appeal. Um, uh, Paul will kind of tee it up for us, walk us through exactly what you know, the, 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 the appeal is, what the guidance is as far as the ordinances for the city, what, what we're trying to accomplish. Um, and then he turns it over to us. He, we want to get our heads wrapped around what's going on. So we'll ask some questions there. Uh, and then we'll open up the floor uh, for the community to discuss. We'll hear from the person that's applying. Um, if there's anybody in the community on the call that, that wants to speak for or against, we'll consider that. We're supposed to act like a, a court in the sense that we're hearing from one side, if there's people for or against, we're going to hear that. And then we're basically going to be done with discussion at some point. And then we're going to make a, a vote. Um, in this case, majority rules. So we have five people on the board. Um, a 3-2 vote gets it approved, right? So you might hear some discourse between us where we agree. And there might be a couple that disagree. At the end of the day, a 3-2 vote gets it approved. And then you move forward with the, uh, you know, the, the, the process and partnering with Paul or Paul's replacement to get everything done um, to code and working with the city. Um, my ask as the chair is uh, these meetings can go really long, especially because I like to talk. So I'm working on trying to be better about that. But um, if, if I might jump in and say, hey, you know, like we've heard the same argument three or four times, let's, let's move on. You're presenting evidence and the evidence you're presenting is ultimately a, a three-step test. You know, can you build and use the property to its, you know, its, uh, its, its purposeful use? Um, is the community, you know, is it impacting the community and um, is the way the property is built, let limit you 
to be able to do it. I think that's basically the three things if I'm speaking incorrectly, but it's basically those three, three ideas. Um, we consider all of that and then we make a vote. So um, we'll open the floor the way we do it is we open the floor for the whole meeting. If we need to, if anything gets weird, we'll shut it down so people can't we really you know discuss. But we just like to open it up for the whole meeting so we don't have to open and close it every every step of the way. Um, so on that note, uh, any questions before we go? If not, a motion to open the floor will be great. So moved. Okay. Any seconds? No okay. Second. Okay, we'll give it to Tom. Um, actually, I'm gonna give everything to Don if it's tied, just because it's the last meeting. So we'll give the second to Don. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor of opening the floor for uh, for the community, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. So now the floor is open again. We will call upon you when it takes your time. I'm going to mute because I've got construction going on, so you guys don't hear that in the background. I super apologize. Um, but let's get to the first one. Appeal 22-008, uh, um, law construction on behalf of Joel, Joseph and Ann Pryle. They're looking to... Um, uh, do a driveway with taper. Um, Alder Sawyer is part of that. It's a held over from a previous meeting. So let's go ahead and jump into that so I can mute and get the drilling out of the way here. Yeah, I, I can start off, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, so this request is a holdover, as you said, from the March meeting. It's 425 Manchester, uh, single family homes on low density residential on the kind of northwest side of Green Bay. Um, a driveway expansion uh, that was done without permits. Um, at the last meeting, I think the board was looking for some more details, more detailed site plan and information about, about the project. Um, the property is highlighted here. Uh, this is a former street view of how a driveway formerly existed. Um, these are some photos from previous discussion at the March meeting about some of the expansion that went on, again, without permits. Um, during some of the construction. What the applicant did is they provided a survey from a registered land surveyor, uh, which, which quite a bit more detail and a, and a better picture of what's going on on the site. They're, they're not encroaching on the neighbor's property. Uh, they are about two and a half feet away from the side lot line, so that is compliant. Um, there's some new photos that they also provided about the expansion. Um, with that said, there was also some additional comments from the adjoining property owner who also had testified at the last meeting. Um, what it basically boils down to now is it's the, the variance is needed for the width of the drive at the property line and the, and the uh, apron opening, opening, so to speak. And this driveway expansion does not lead to a parking spot behind the setback. So those are kind of the three elements you have to kind of consider um, in this variance request. Okay, perfect. Before we get to the case, uh, are there any questions um, from board members uh, for Paul to get our heads wrapped around this? I have okay. two. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Barbara. Paul, Paul, did you you mentioned that it was without permits? Um, and I thought in reading through the information that we were, I was, there was permits that were granted. Can you help me understand that discrepancy? I, I don't have the full detail of the full backstory. It's my understanding that it was done um, or expansions were done without the permit or maybe possibly exceeded the permit. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay. okay, and Alder Stoyer, I know you're. This is yours as well, and you yeah. submitted some conversation. Do you want to jump in uh, earlier? Yeah. Or do you want to jump in after the, the I, applicant? I might make just a couple of general comments, and then I'll definitely uh, lean on the citizens. They're both here uh, to speak to it. Uh, I met both with the uh, with the Connor family, and also with Joe and Ann Pryle, so um, they're neighbors and. Uh, twice i met with both of them twice and uh tried to hear both sides of the story you know there's both sides made some good good points and it sounded like you know they were moving along in, in the correct manner so to speak i think one of the things that uh, uh that travis conard was worried about was the fact that uh, you know the the prior the priors want to put a large rv right there uh, the neighbors on the other side of the Connors also have a giant, very large RV as well. So they're, it's kind of a visual thing. It's, you know, I, I wanted to check into the ordinances to make sure everything was okay with that. And it, 
it seems like you know, our ordinances are set up such that uh, things are legal with that. I guess the, the question I did have was about the, the driveway, you know, about the permit or, or lack thereof. And, there, and I did get a letter from Ann Pryle who said that they did go ahead and do that. So I guess what I'd like to do is listen to the Pryle side and then uh, Travis Connard's side as well. Just let them speak to the board and I'll make some other comments later on. Thank you for that. Um, all right, we will start with uh, uh, the applicant. If you are on the call, go ahead and uh, unmute and we'll jump right in um, and kind of take us through the, uh, the case here. Name and address for the record too. I'm no. unsure. If, I'm unsure. <clears throat> I'm unsure if I uh, should be speaking. If uh, the contractor Rob was the actual applicant. If he's on the call, he can jump on and speak on behalf. If not, if you're here for the case, we have it both ways. Sometimes, whether it's the applicant or the the property owner, it, it doesn't matter. Whoever's here to speak for and present the case. Okay. Joe Pryle and the address is 425 Manchester Drive. Um, the expansion was due to the fact that in order to remain city compliant with the trailer and not having enough space between the property line and the physical building was why the, 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 the expansion was done at the lead of the, the driveway and the trailer remains in the lead of the driveway. There's just no physical room along the side of the house. Okay, so uh, for us, walk us through, um, you know, the the actual, you know, case here. So, for example, like the physical characteristics of the property that prevent you from complying with the ordinance. So, the one the one thing that's super important for people to understand is that um, that, that the the reason for an application or an appeal can't be self imposed, right? It has to be something that's constricting you based on what you want to do with the property because of the unique properties of the, the, the thing. But if you're doing something that is a self-imposed, right? So, hey, I want to do this because of this um, and you've created it yourself and that can't be a, a justification for us to grant the variance. So I'm looking for, hey, look, this is why I can't do what I do. The physical characteristics of the property allow, don't allow me to do A, B, C, D. Well, uh the distance between the uh, physical house and the property line won't allow me to place my vehicle, I place my RV alongside the garage on a separate parking pad in order to help, you know, with basic maintenance of the property. So we had asked with the contractor if this was even allowable and can we do it and we were we got the idea that yes we that, that, that we could and that it should be compliant if there's not enough access to either side of the building can i ask a question please of course yeah thank you so t tell me about the permitting process then how did that come about Well, on uh, we apparently the the permit was issued because the city was out to inspect twice. They wouldn't inspect something that isn't permitted twice. Oh, is that is that accurate? May I ask, Paul? Right. So I, I don't know the full history. Again, this is a complaint. The, the complaint is that there was work done without permits. We, we do not have a driveway expansion permit on file for this property. Um, if there was any sort of inspection, I think maybe it's reinspection fees that were maybe applied to the property based on non-compliance or needing to have the applicant or property owner come in to file uh, the proper permits or site plan for that. But we do not have a permit for the expansion on file at this point. So it, it appears just simply be a complaint, again, work done without a permit. I'll, I can't speak to that far as I'm told is through the, through the contractor that permits were issued and okays were given.
Okay. Any other information that you want to provide to the, the board before we get to questions? <clears throat> and then I can think of offhand. Okay. Uh, board members, are there any questions you have for the applicant? I have a question. Um, with respect to uh, parking your, uh, your RV, are you thinking that this, this variance would permit you to keep it there year round or only when the city uh, allows those types of, uh, of things to be you know, in the front of the property? It would not be year round. It's actually season, it seasonally, during the off season, it's actually stored off site. That answers my question, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, hearing none, um, let's go ahead and open it up. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pryle. Um, is there anybody else on the call that wants to speak for or against this uh, application? Go ahead and uh, come on and then unmute and uh, state your name and address. Yeah, I, I'm Travis Connor. Uh, I live at 429 Manchester Drive uh, next door. Uh, this okay. is my wife, Michelle. Yeah, Hello, Michelle. Michelle. Hi. Same address? Yes, sorry. Same address, okay. 429 Manchester. That's fine. Thanks for being here tonight. Um, just for the record, there was the email um, submission with the chain of the conversation that was sent out to the board. Um, I'll assume that the board members had a chance to read that over. Um, and obviously I appreciate uh, sharing that. Again, the goal of speeding maybe some of this up. So uh, go ahead and give us um, your thoughts on um, kind of the for or against kind of portion of this. Yeah, um, I think it's clear from the, the email um, that we sent ahead of time to try and save time that we're against the extension basically boils down to the fact that there's just, um, you know, Joe even said there's not enough space between the houses and the, the zoning ordinances don't permit the extension in the front past the garage. Um, so the, unfortunately, these lots just aren't big enough for that sort of a thing. By extending it, it's, you know, imposing on us and our privacy. Um, it, it's just, it's too close. And as Alderman Stoyer, I uh, mentioned earlier, we already have a situation on the other side of us with a, a massive motor home on that side of the driveway and that driveway extended all the way to the lot line. So we're being pinched on both sides. And uh, the one on the side of Joe is, is kind of a, a different level because again, it is next to our bedroom. It's not next to the garage on the other side. So um, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, um, I feel, Bad that it's gotten to this point. Um, like I said in the last meeting, I, I tried my hardest in the very beginning to be open and honest with both contractor and Joe that, you know, I was going to follow through and that do whatever you're entitled to, but don't go over because I don't want to have to ask you to tear out concrete. Um, you know, I try to do everything to prevent this. Unfortunately, we're here and it's, it's just too close. It's too big of a camper and it's a decision that's going to live on beyond even us being here or Joe here. The neighborhood as a whole is just in the 13 years I've been here now, we continue to lose trees and gain campers. It looks like, you know, a campground here this time of year. Um, you mentioned, you know, off season storage, you know, that's six months of the year. It's about six months, one way or the other. That's half of the year with a huge, essentially wall right outside our bedroom window. So, you know, it's unfortunate. I, I, I'm not trying to do it, you know, impose on anybody else, but it, it's imposing on us and uh, it's just too close. Okay. okay. I, Any, I actually have uh, a question because if from my, um, uh, Joe, hold on one, hold, hold on one second uh, before we get to like, the some of the debate is there any questions by the board members for um is it connard is that how you say it yes the, the, the connards any questions there okay and then, joe if you could direct the the conversation toward the board versus the back and forth of the the neighbors it would be more helpful yes um i, I and you know i'm I'm going to point out the, the observation that I've made 
is he has the claim that it's outside of his bedroom window, which it is by one of the bedroom, by one of the bedrooms, but not directly in front of any window. They actually, from my observation, use the rear bedroom, not the front. That's okay. We use both rooms and thanks for observing. And, and just so you know, that's inaccurate. Um, we do use the front bedroom for our bedroom. Please stop watching us. Well, again, I know this is odd, but just try and refrain from the talking to each other. Just keep directing yeah. it like, oh, hey, you know, I said this. Yeah. Actually, here's our case towards the board. Um, okay. Uh, is there any other comments, concerns, thoughts before we kind of pour towards the the board for discussion? Is yeah, oh, there someone else on the call that wants to speak? It looks like a Rob over here. Okay. Uh, Travis, you have one more thought here? Before yeah, I, like I said earlier, you know, it's a decision that's going to live beyond both Joe and I here. Uh, when we go to sell this house eventually in however many years, you know, I, you can't even see our house driving down the road. It's boxed on both sides. I don't know who on earth would want to buy that house. It's obviously going to affect our property value. Um, and I know, you know, again, the argument is that it's seasonal, but that's the same season when you sell houses, right? Spring and summer. So, um, and then also, like I mentioned on the previous call, there was mention uh, when I talked to Joe last summer that they want to have people stay over in the camper. And that's just, again, a privacy matter. So uh, I'll leave that at that. Thank you. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and go over to uh, uh, Rob. I'm just going to say Rob, if that's okay. Uh, and I noticed you were trying to jump in here. Go ahead and unmute and state your name and your address for the record. I think you're still muted, Rob. Still muted. Okay, I found it. There you go. Okay, uh, name and address okay, for the record, and then uh, go ahead and jump in. Bob Jagosinski, 14408 Warrington Lake Lane, Gillette, Wisconsin. Um, just with this, I, I, did the, I did the work there. The permit started, I guess, uh, we locked, took them out. But beyond the, the permits right now, the camper was always there. It was in the grass. It was mud. So it's not like the camper was never there. And if the concrete would get removed, there would be pavers there and the camper would still be there. So it would be more of an eyesore, more mud. It, it's just one of these things where to, the neighbor has one. Should, should the neighbor have to get rid of his? Um, did the guy on the road have to get rid of his? It, it's his property. I understand if, if a guy puts a pool in his backyard, you don't want to pool in his backyard, you know, because of the noise from the kids playing in it all day long. It, it's just scenarios that life has challenges and sometimes we got to get along. The world is a mess if we look at TV and watch the news. We are taking rights away from a guy that pays his taxes and has property and loves to go camping. And I... Unfortunately, the neighbors don't like that. But on the other hand is everyone who has a camper shouldn't have to not have a camper because the neighbor don't want to have a camper. Just like if the neighbor plays loud music, yeah, to a point, he has to turn it down. But he's not harming or hurting anyone by having his camper there to enjoy. And that's why he goes to work to enjoy his camper. So yeah, this with this helping. being said, yeah, not, hold on. Let me, not let me jump property, in here, though. Rob. Rob, let me jump in. So I think the okay. goal of the, the comments is to speak to facts and and leave so, out okay. a, a little bit more. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on, okay. hold on. You're jumping into a lot of uh, what I'll label a little bit of political discourse and commentary on society. Sure. And it's, sure. not, it's not what this is for. It's not a platform okay. to vocalize that. It's to speak okay. to, hey, I'm the contractor. I pulled permits. This is what it is. And at the end of the day, it's it's about the property and the intended use of that property. Um, and so little to do really with how that individual is using it, right? It's, it's so little of that. It's over, yeah. over 
the property itself and how this property can be used to its okay. uh, its purpose. So just Noel has a comment here, but I'd, I'd like to just, okay. for the sake yeah. of time and everything, let's just limit the, the political discourse and all of the commentary on society. I, I think that it's important well, to note I, I, that, that this- Go ahead, Noel. That this isn't a permitted use. That's why this matter is before the Zoning Board of Appeals, because this isn't something that the property owner is allowed to do with his property without approval that demonstrates that it's in the public interest to grant the variance. And I'm not hearing a compelling case for that right now. I'm also hearing that there's no permit pulled for this. There was some confusion around that, but I'm hearing the city staff telling us that there's no permit on file for this driveway expansion. So th those are some, some key facts that I'm gonna think about as we get down to making a decision here. And I'm hoping that's coming soon. Yeah, Rob, I have other people with their hands raised. So is there any, any facts or information that you need to provide to help the well, case? I don't have the facts of the permits, but I was text messaged twice. And then when we were pouring the top one, the guy did come, the inspector came and said the permit for the bottom was pulled, but the top wasn't. So that was pulled right that day. And he said, continue. And I don't remember the gentleman's name. So I don't have the record available to me right now but it was paid for for the permits and it was inspected okay. twice we I, I don't know the gentleman's name though so okay with that being okay. said well I guess do a little more investigation okay let's move on um I see a Corey has got his hand digitally raised is that accurate Corey you wanted to jump in and have a comment for or against this variance um I just had a, I was just wondering if I was allowed to ask a question for clarity sure just so from understanding so I guess my question with regard to it is why does the priles need to have that large of a camper that doesn't fit in the existing driveway I think that's that might be what I'm seeing as a root question. Um, my address two eight seven four Ogden Woods, but that's that's the only thing that I was not understanding from clarity. Um, and uh, thank you for the address there, um, Mr. Pryle. Do you have any uh, um, comment on that? And then we'll move on to some discussion for the board. Well, the RV was actually purchased before we bought this property, so it was a it was property it was already it was a, a vehicle that was already owned okay perfect um without that uh is it new information mr connard or is it just we're kind of going in circles and i don't i want to speed this up and maybe get through a little bit of discussion but if it's some compelling evidence or information i'd, I'd love to hear it you're muted Thank you. Sorry. I just wanted to, to make a point um, in reaction to the contractor that uh, it's much like Noel said, it's not uh, taking away anything. It's an addition and the camper would fit in the driveway. It would just block one of the stalls by extending it. It's that's what we're here for. OK, thank you. Um, all right. Let's get to uh, some discussion. Is there any by board members, any questions that are left hanging? Um, go ahead, Tom, you jump right in. Yeah, so with respect to having a camper on a property, I understand parking an empty camper, all right? Are there any restrictions with respect to people living in that camper? And that would maybe be a question for um, maybe Alderman Stoyer or Paul. I mean, at what point? Does it change from being temporarily stored there, you know, to go off site and be camped in, and then for other people to live there, the other people being there, does that change the status of it being there? I, I think I can address that. In the ordinance, these are considered recreational vehicles, not just campers, but it could be anything else that's recreational, right? Motorcycles, snowmobiles, so forth. With campers specifically, you cannot live within a camper parked on a driveway. Now, I'm sure people might use them for family events or whatever it might be or sleepovers, but for, 
for the purpose of sleeping there, no, I'm or not, a, not a permanent resident, so to speak, no. Well, at what point does it become not a family sleepover? I mean, is there a number of days people are there or? No, but it, it's complaint-based. A lot of times we react to complaints. So if a neighbor said, hey, I, something doesn't look right over there, there's always someone staying there, we might send an inspector out to investigate and determine if they're actually living in that uh, RV. How many days would constitute living there? Well, I suppose technically one would, but I mean, we're not policing those to that degree. Again, we're looking at it holistically um, based on maybe several days and based on a complaint. Thank you, Paul. Board members, any other questions for either applicants or people speaking for or against? I do have a question for Paul. Yeah, go ahead, Don. I I'm sure you've explained this to me before, Paul, but in the situation that the applicant uh, or the contractor has described where the driveway is not expanded and the, the um, camper is just sitting on the grass or something uh, next to it, what ordinances speak to that situation? It's not permitted. Um, so any sort of vehicle, whatever it is, has to be parked on a solid surface. Um, so they can't park on the grass. They couldn't have one tire on the grass. Technically, it has to be on a solid surface. So putting pavers there, for example, wouldn't qualify. Right, exactly. It would have to be part of an approved driveway parking situation. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Mr. Stoyer or Alder Stoyer, do you have uh, any comments or thoughts? I know you want to well, say back at the end. Yeah. Um, <laughs> This is a hard situation. I think, uh, you know, the Priles had mentioned that uh, in a letter, and I think the board got it too, that, uh, you know, permits had been taken out, et cetera, et cetera, which in a sense would make everything legal if, if they went ahead with it and, and, and such. But I think the crux of the matter here is, um, you know, according to Mr. Neumeier, that uh, there were no permits, or at least legalized permits. You know, there might have been some inspections and things like that. So, that's where that's where I kind of hit the wall on that. Um, um, you know, I think both you know the priors are very forthright. I talked to them about it, and uh, like I said, you know, the fact that the neighbor on the other side of the Connors has a large uh, RV as well, it is what it is. You know, I mean, I I had one next to my house for five years and wasn't pretty, didn't like it, but it was legal. So. I think it all it all bases on on the permits that were were done, and is this a hardship? You know, they they did build they did build this with the hope that they could put their RV there. Um, it seems kind of close. I, I I wanted to make sure that you know Paul Newmeyer would state that that the concrete that's there right now is set back far enough from the from the uh, lot line. Um, but I think I'm resting on the fact that if 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 there aren't uh, current permits for it then then i i'm not in favor if if that's the case that that's where i'm standing right now unless somebody else can prove to me otherwise so that's where i'm at right now okay thank you alder Sawyer. any other things uh we want to jump into some discussion uh board members and then i gotta jump out um after the vote of this one so any uh any discussion or thoughts for the record Yeah, Tommy, I'll, I'll just say that I think we need to consider this as if it, ignoring the uh, whether there was a permit or not, if this, if this were presented to us without concrete having been poured, but with all the same arguments uh, from the various parties, how would we rule? Uh, I just hope we can somehow get past the point of whether there was a permit or not, and whether there's existing concrete in our consideration of the arguments. Yeah, fair point. And, and again, that's good for the record as well. You know, it's a uh, it's a difficult thing. Sometimes we're in we've seen some very difficult uh, situations where a lot of work had been done on on certain things and people didn't realize fences that had to get pulled houses that had to get moved. So uh, it's uh, a difficult process when work's already been done. But Don is absolutely right. And thank you again for clarifying that, that we have to look at it as if it was a brand new thing where something was was just happening regardless of the work being done. Um, um, Barbara. Um, Paul, 
how how much of the concrete would be permitted or is all of that entire pad that is is needs a variance or is it a, a portion of it that needs a variance yeah I, I think it starts at the apron and the size of that which is is too large then it goes up to the property line or the right-of-way line where that exceeds the 25 foot and then anything beyond the garage door opening is, is not permitted. But again, the board could grant a variance and uh, still give relief in, you know, to those, some of those requirements if they choose to do that. But would have to be based on those three unnecessary hardship due to conditions unique to the property and not contrary to the public interest. So I'm, right. I'm struggling, I'm struggling to Meet, meet those so hopefully the wisdom of the board will help me if if they're seeing there's a way to meet those well i think I'll, I'll jump in here is uh you know again i i love part you've gone through the training and and it is really does the applicant demonstrate all three of those boxes and it can't be just one of those boxes it can't be two it has to be all three of those different things and i and I think it's critical that we really use that filter. And uh, and for my my sense right now, just to kind of put myself on record, I I don't see a case being made currently um, for the, all three of those boxes to be checked. You know, the public interest. Obviously, we have a neighbor that's not um, happy with it. I don't think the intended use of the property is you know living beyond a camper. You know, I don't see that 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 desired need fits with the property you know, long-term. And um, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a no on this one, everybody. So if that helps, you know, uh, do some counting, but that's kind of where I'm lying uh, currently. I'm also a no, Tommy. I would be Can a no as well. On? Okay. Um, on that case, that, that, that kind of gets us to a certain point where we can either get a motion and take a vote, or if there's more case to be made to try and sway the nose to more of a yes, but that definitely lines us up for a, a vote if that's where we're at as a board. I don't want to short the conversation because I have to go, but I do want to, if, if there's no other discussion being made, we, we can go to a vote here. I'll look to Noel um, and Barbara to see where they're at. Are you ready to try and vote you have any other thoughts here i'm willing to act on somebody's motion okay i'm ready to act on a motion as well okay i'll accept the motion then okay i'll um mr chairman let me move let me make a motion that we uh, as a board deny the variance request uh, presented to us in this item okay i'll second the Do motion I okay so i have a motion to deny the request by uh, mr carlson and a second by mr hoy um, any other discussion before we take a vote? Noel, yes. Uh, that action wouldn't preclude the petitioner from making some other request that might be, uh, you know, a, a modification or something of the the drive, right? Uh, if or, we vote right now, Paul, it would be uh, a or denial. Is the, or of the is request. the driveway completely out of the? You know, I mean, are they unable to take any action for a year? Depend. You know, I don't know exactly how that that works. I guess it depends if you want to give them that latitude. I think as a denial, they need to come back. It's an enforcement issue for our staff to get compliance and that might be weeks or months, but um, yeah, I think it's up to the discretion of the board. If you want to give them an out, so to speak. Are you looking I'm, for an out, Noel? I, I just, yeah, I know that if we deny a variance request, then that kind of starts a year long clock running. And I guess, you know, given that there's an active you know, there's a new driveway there, right? And whether or not our action says that driveway's got to go away, I'm just curious about if we want to leave a door open for the property owner to maybe propose an alternative strategy in the future in less than a year's time. Don, you want to make any mo modifications to your motion? Um, at least in my opinion, my motion does not include any additional modifications. Tom, do you are you in Fair the same enough. spot with your second? Yes. Okay, let's move forward with the vote on this. Thank you, Noel. I appreciate your always your thoughtfulness. Um, let's go ahead and take a vote. Um, again, we're voting to approve the motion. So we're voting yes to deny. Um, so that's how we're voting right now. So all those in favor of denying the variance request, go ahead and say aye. 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 Anybody opposed to the denial? Okay, hearing none. Okay, 
So uh, that one fails. Um, so Mr. Pryor, I'll just work with Paul on next steps for what that looks like. Again, difficult decisions. And I know that's impacts people in the community and, and what's going on, but um, we voted and it's a unanimous vote. So um, we're gonna move on. I'm going to hand off to Noel. Um, again, before I go, um, thank you for those that are participating in the call. Um, Paul, you're awesome. Thank you for the, uh, the announcement. We should organize something if we can to celebrate Don and you. Um, and welcome Barbara in, in, in person because it's been too long since we've seen it. Steven, you're in, so you get to come in and vote now. Uh, again, Paul, thank you. Don, thank you. And Paul, my apologies for jumping to some other work stuff, but I appreciate you guys' uh, leniency there. So thank you, everybody. I'm going to log off. Noel, it's yours. There's no formal action I need to do to give it to Noel, right? Nope. All right. Noel, have fun, buddy. All right, guys. See you, Tommy. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Tommy. Take care, Tommy. All right. Uh, next up is item number three, appeal 22-016. Uh, Christopher Jandron, uh, Mobeta LEC property owner, proposes to repave an existing gravel driveway in a low density R1 district at 617 South Clay Street. The applicant requests to deviate from the following requirements in chapter 44 of the zoning code, section 44-1746 parent one number of driveways and section 44, 1746, 2D side yard setback. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, I'm gonna introduce the next two items together, 617 South Clay and 621, 623 South Clay. They happen to be adjoining properties. They happen to both be zone low density residential and have common ownership or the same ownership, I should say, but they're two different requests, but they're pretty much identical requests. They have to do with the driveways. Um, 617 here has uh, two driveways already. Um, their proposal is to improve one of those driveways on the south side, I believe. Um, correct, on the south side. So there is an issue with the setback, the two and a half foot setback that's required for that drive, as well as a number of drives. For low density residential properties, they're only allowed one driveway cut. The proposal here is for two. So again, it's the setback of two and a half feet and the number of drives on clay that are being considered for both this property and the, and the next item. Thanks, Paul. Um, and um, gosh, it's, it's uh, um, I guess this is the point where we go and we hear from the petitioner. So, um, and I see that, um, uh, Mr. Jandron is on the call with us here. So, um, sir, would you like to comment to the board about your requests and why um, uh, variance is necessary? Okay. Um, can you all hear me okay? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, I guess the first uh, item, as far as whether uh, two driveways are permitted, I guess in reading the uh, code the what I the way I read it the way I understand it that a duplex property is allowed to have two driveways um, per property um, so I can Paul explain to me why I would not be allowed to have two driveways uh, they're both both uh, both uh, properties are duplexes yeah, I, I think you could be correct. And um, we recently updated our residential section. So that is that is correct. So that's not a variance request. Okay, so there is no variance there. So really, the it's only variance that. is the two and a half feet of setback from the property line. And I, I don't know if you can bring that up, but if you can show, I guess, the sketches that I submitted, um, it shows uh, really just the the clearance, you know, there, there is really not, not sufficient clearance to allow for an eight foot wide driveway um, and still have the two foot five, five feet of clearance between each one. If, uh, if I were to do that, that would really only give me 5.5 feet of driveway width, um, you know, allowing for some uh, clearance from the building itself if you notice like okay for the drawing that you're showing there um, I need about mm, at least a foot and a half of clearance from the building itself because there's a window well there there's actually electric meters along that narrowest point 
of the driveway. And so, you know, I'm not uh, proposing to put the driveway tight to the building um, because I think that would just promote someone running into an electric meter or whatever. Um, so uh, basically if I, any, any uh, dimension that I take off of the eight feet would basically uh, not allow me to have an eight foot wide driveway, which is also um, in the code that, um, you know, minimum driveway width um, shall be eight feet. And so that's um, the reason I don't, and I don't want to have um, a green space in between because uh, I just feel that'll just end up being a, a muddy mess and it'll be difficult to maintain. Um, so, and then the fact that I own both buildings or, you know, both properties, uh, I think it'd just be in the best interest to keep it well-maintained. I actually, I believe it'll look better for the whole neighborhood. Um, you know, I'm trying to do improvements, uh, you know, the property at, uh, uh, 621 South Clay, I've done significant improvements. I've probably thrown $100,000 into that uh, property, um, improving it. It's currently in use as a short-term rental property in the upper unit. And the second, the lower unit is uh, currently uh, actually been applied for. I'm just waiting on the county inspection after I get it fully furnished. Um, so I'm also providing uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, hotel tax, you know, on that property on the, on the right property on the 621 property. And there may be further plans at the 617 property for that purpose. I am also planning to do some further improvements at 617. And this kind of lays the groundwork for that to really make general improvements, uh, that will enhance the overall look of the neighborhood. You know, I feel that it's a very, uh, it's a very good neighborhood to start with uh, being, you know, across from the, uh, the park there at uh, Baird Place, close to the hospitals. Uh, I figured it has a lot of, um, you know, potential for improvement. And actually, I think even since I started doing my improvements, there's been many improvements in the general neighborhood. So, um, great. Thank you. Um, do we have any questions for the petitioner? Um, I did have one. Uh, you were mentioning, Mr. Jandron, that uh, in, the, in the new, and I, I apologize, I don't remember which property this was, but the one that was getting the new driveway on the one side, that the gas and electric utilities were there. Um, is that- is Just that, the electric, I'm sorry. Just, sorry to interrupt, but it was just the electric, yes. Okay. I'm, le I'm less concerned. <laughs> I was more concerned having a, a, a gas pig that close to the driveway because uh, one little uh, twitch of the arm would uh, not be great. So uh, that was my only question. Thank you. Um, I have a, I just have a couple. Um, the, the, uh, the north driveway at the northern most property is um, currently pavers, is that staying pavers or is that getting replaced with concrete? Yes, no, it's staying, staying as pavers. I think the pavers look look good as they are. And uh, I'm not planning on any, uh, any doing anything with that particular right. side. And, and, and just a note to Paul, Paul, that does that count for or against uh, impermeable surface when they're pavers like that? It does, any solid surface would be included in impervious. Uh, Calculation, yes. You don't have a fraction of this the area then based on the permeability or the flow through possibly. Well, we we could split hairs if we had to. Okay, sure. all right. Um, and then the the driveway that's going to be between the two properties is that going to, from the standpoint of pouring it, be one continuous um, driveway? You said that you're not going to have a. Uh, green strip or anything like that. Obviously, you don't have enough room to work with there. Um, just it would be continuous pavement. Um, however, uh, the construction method would be to pave um, one side or the other first, probably the, the south side first. There would be a seam there right at the property line there. So it happens to be a good 
uh, survey stake that's right there in the driveway. So it's easy to, to uh, identify the property line. And there would be a seam at that point to uh, delineate the property line um, for future owners, you know, as the case may be, although I don't have any intention to sell the property or anything like that, but I felt like that would be good to, um, you know, maybe have a clear uh, delineation of the the property line um, as part of the way the concrete's been, is going sure. to be poured. Sure, and if the neighbors, if the residents themselves are responsible for snow removal, then they've got an indicator of where they, they've got to remove up to. Correct. Um, and none of this work has occurred yet. You're actually asking for this before no. you're doing the work, right? No, nothing's, uh, I have two permit applications um, that have been applied for and the, the permit fees have been paid. But it was, this was like the prerequisite to the, uh, to the actual uh, permit issuance. Is there any garage construction accompanying this work? No. That's, they're all in place or, or no new garages? Okay. That's correct. I think if you show the uh, the aerial view, possibly you can see the, the garage situation. Okay, so there's garages at the one and just one garage at the other, so. That's correct. Got it. All right. I don't have any other questions. Gentlemen, uh, fellow board members, do any of you have any questions? No, I think this is exactly why we're here to provide the um, expeditious use of the properties in this way. We have had a lot of these shared driveway types of things before. I think it's a great way to do it. My only thought on this is how is this going to be recognized in the ownership deeds uh, records that the city or the county have? I recognize that these are owned by the same person right now, but that may not be the case in the future. I believe that us giving a, a variance on this tonight is probably sufficient for any other purposes, but I'm thinking that if this goes on long enough that the property is sold in 30 or 40 years when there's nobody around to remember this, we, I'm just uh, I'm wondering what the procedure is that this gets recognized in formal writing. You know, Don, I wondered that myself, but given the fact that the petitioner has allocated at least an eight foot maximum width of the driveway on each side of that lot line, I wonder if even if future owners, you know, were different for the two parcels that there wouldn't be, there would still be a sufficient drive lane for anything so that they don't actually need, you know, the, uh, to, 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 to cross that center line, if you will, um, yeah. to park you know, their cars. I I can't imagine anybody in the future not wanting it the way the applicant is proposing. Right. I would also, uh, I mean, aren't uh, permits searchable? Uh, and how long does the city retain the records? I'm sorry, Steve. So I, I, it was I, a question I, for Paul. Okay. Well, how are, are the permits searchable and how long does the city retain the records? Um, they are public and they we keep them forever. That, that kind of answers Don's question then. If, Anybody's well, got to worry about whether or not I, this was permitted. I, yeah, I don't I want think, to create a problem, but you know, it would be nice to have an understanding on how this works because usually in the past we have asked for, at least as I recall, some sort of agreement between the two parties when there's two parties involved. In this case, there's just one, but there may be two in the future. I think as Noel kind of pointed out, there are two distinct driveways. There's really not a shared drive situation here. I suppose you could stipulate a shared parking access agreement. Um, but again, I think the way it's laid out in this case, it's probably going to function as two different driveways and, and neighbors will simply have to cooperate going forward. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I don't have anything else. I think we're ready to vote. We have, uh, oh, Ms. Ms. Dorf. Our Thank you. I just, you guys, you have to bear with me because I want to practice my knowledge now, okay? <laughs> so I'm looking at the tests, unnecessary hardships. So I went out there, I looked, you know what? The, the houses are so close together and that gravel driveway, it just it made sense. There's already driveway there. So that made sense to me that this could be under unnecessary hardship for the purpose of having a driveway. Then conditions unique to the property, 
for me were, yep, because there's, they're so close together. There's, you know, currently drives, you need, need to have a driveway to, because you can't park a car on the street in the city of Green Bay. So you have to have a driveway. And then the only part, not contrary to the public interest, definitely I think it's gonna look better than the gravel. The permeableness of it, you know, being part or having attended the sustainability commission many times, um, wondering about the water runoff because gravel would be permeable, right? Water runs through the current driveway. Is that or not? Or is it considered an impermeable? We would consider it impervious. Yeah. Okay, it's impervious. No problem at all. I am ready to vote on this and to approve it. Thank Thanks, you. Barb. I, yeah, the only other thing you know that we might want to do uh, or ask a petitioner in this circumstance would be to say something along the lines of, "Well." Do you really need 16 feet of pavement between those two buildings? If you own both of them, you intend to own them both forever. Couldn't you have a narrower drive lane and have a little bit more room between the houses? Um, but then we'd be creating the very sort of situation that Don was talking about, where in some future day, when maybe you know both properties are not owned by the same owner, then we've got a situation where they've got to have a shared driveway agreement and, and figure those sorts of things out. So. Um, but those are questions that we could ask and say, well, did you consider our other alternatives, um, you know, for doing this? Um, but, uh, you know, we don't, we don't have to do that. Um, um, I, think, uh, I think the petitioner has acquitted himself well in terms of the things that he's thought about and, uh, and considered here and, and putting this proposal together. Great. Is there any other discussion that we need to have before uh, somebody's willing to make a motion? Somebody willing to make a motion on, on acting on, uh, let's say on both of these requests. Um, well, no, let's do them as individual motions. I think um, if we could perhaps um, let's take uh, item three, appeal 22-016, or we could make a single motion for appeal 22-016 and 22-017. I would entertain a motion for one, either or both. I would like to make a motion, my first in this committee, to approve both because it just seems to make sense to do that. So to approve 617 South Clay and 621 23 South Clay as requested. Um, as requested. Is there a second, second. motion? Motion by Barb, second by Don. Any other discussion that we need to have? And although the Agenda reflects uh, a number of driveways variance requirement. Uh, we, we dispense with that and we don't need to include that in the motion. That's, is that correct, Paul? Okay. Correct. All right, so we have a motion and a second on the floor. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. You have your Excellent. variances. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you for your consideration. I'd also like to say, uh, uh, Mr. Jandron, you put together an excellent application and the putting the crack down the center of the property line uh, alleviated uh, a question I was gonna ask you before we even started. So well done, thank you, sir. Excellent idea, yep. Thank you. Take care. All right, I'm going to exit, thank you. All right, uh, the, our next item is appeal, is this correct 21-018 or is that a typo and it should be 22-018? No, it should be 22. Okay. It's a typo. I'm sorry. All right. It's probably me. I, I usually do the title headings. My fault. All right. <laughs> uh, appeal 22-018. Uh, Corey Bogenschutz, property owner, proposes to replace an existing pool in a low-density R1 district at 2874 Ogden Woods Court. The applicant requests to deviate from the following requirement in Chapter 13. Uh, the Green Bay Zoning Code, Section 44-385E10, a waterway setback. Thank, thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, the property is located on the far southwest side of Green Bay, <coughs> low density residential R1, single family home. As you described, this request is to replace an existing, it appears to be above ground pool. Um, with this, there is a requirement for a waterway setback of 50 feet from any navigable stream. And the, although the stream is not called out on any of our maps, it is navigable. It's been determined by that by the, the DNR. You can kind of see it kind of cutting back through the property here. Mm. And they're proposing uh, that proposal for the pool replacement encroaches on that 50 foot setback. So hence the applicant needs that relief to, to reconstruct the, uh, the pool in the current, current location. Uh, 
All right. Well, we have our petitioner here. Um, let's hear from him. Hi, uh, Corey Bogenschutz, 2874 Ogden Woods. Um, yes, the, the pool um, existed. Um, it was there for approximately 20 to 25 years. Uh, the prior owner had it installed in the late 90s. Um, and we, as we've now found out, there was not a permit pulled for it at the time. Um, prior to deciding if we were going to replace the pool, um, a neighbor two houses down actually went through the same process last year. Uh, Tim White actually, about a year to the date, uh, presented a similar case with regard to the setback. Um, in his process to get a pool and decking installed into the backyard of his home, he actually gone through the DNR as far as getting a definition as far as why is this creek defined as a navigable waterway. Um, you can't put a crack, you can't put a canoe in it, you can't put a kayak in it, nothing will float in it. Um, basically, it's set as a waterway from a prior plot back into probably the pre 80s, uh, where basically this was undeveloped land. Um, the DNR wetland is in between the properties between ours and Shelter Creek and behind there. Um, so basically, it's navigable because you can portage it. So basically, going from one waterway to the next by carrying your canoe. Um, I haven't seen anybody portage this creek in the last three years that have basically owned the property, nor have there probably been anybody who's portaged that in the last 25 years. Um, the 40 foot um, range that we're looking at is actually 12 feet further away from the creek uh, than Mr. White's, which was set precedent with the approval last year. Um, and I think that's about where I would sit. Thank you. Do we have any questions for the petitioner? Uh, I do. Uh, given the experience with your, your neighbor, did you give any thought to contacting the DNR and having them uh, recalculate this as far as being a waterway or not? Um, in the discussion with Tim White I had last week, um, the DNR is very non-movable uh, with regard to reclassifying this as a uh, non-navigable waterway. Um, there would be multitudes of different um, litigation cases that would have to go through with regard to it. Um, it's It would be unnecessarily cumbersome and costly to even attempt. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, yeah, I, I do have a question. Paul, could you describe the variance again? Variance request? It's just not, it, there's no side yard, there's no setback it's just this waterway thing it is right so it's part of our general requirements it's it's our it, it's a waterway setback so it is a setback issue measured from from the navigable stream okay. so again the idea is to protect uh, <laughs> that area protect the water course at least for 50 feet okay and that's a city imposed condition then it's not a dnr imposed condition Correct. It, it's, okay. it's part of our zoning code, yes. Okay, so it's within our purview then. Fine. Okay, that's yes. what I need to clarify. And then how close is the pool or how much are we talking as far as uh, needing a variance for, for feet? Uh, the, the, the existing location where the pool is, the edge of the pool would be 40 feet from that navigable waterway. So it's a 10 foot range. And then that's where the new pool is going is over the existing? Yeah, exact exact same location. Uh, Mr. Bogenschutz, is that going to be another above ground pool? Yes. Uh, in the in the site site plan that I've uh, filed for the permit, uh, we just have to bring in uh, skid steer to basically re-level it, which will just require digging down just a little ways further just to re-level it and then build it back up with new sand. I'm sorry, do we know the minimum distance? Did I miss that while I was looking 50, at some 50. other 50. No, no, what the current, what the what oh. the minimum distance will be between the pool and the- 40 feet. Waterway, 40 feet. So we're talking about a 10 foot variance. And as I mentioned, the precedent with Tim White's last year, his was at 28 feet. So his, his was 32 feet of variance. I'm sorry, 22 feet. Math is hard at night. It is. <laughs> no worries. Are there any other questions for the petitioner? Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to address the board on this item? 
One of the neighbors is on. Tony, James, Maria. Yeah, that, that is me, James Anderson, and I do live at 2873 Ogden Woods Drive, right next door. So if you're looking at Corey's house, I'm the one to the left. But I'm on my way back. Uh, I'm almost back home. I'm on my way back from a tennis uh, senior night with five kids in a car. So I'm going to try to get home in like two minutes, and then I'll talk if uh, it's still if my comments still need to be heard. They, they they do. Can you tell us as you're as you're going though? Are you speaking for or against the request? I'm speaking for the request. Okay. Yeah, my neighbor just to the other side of me, uh, Tim White. You know, like Corey said, the precedent was already set. I think it's a pretty simple uh, variance request, which actually is less of a variance that was approved uh, from Tim's pool. You know, I think the area we live in, um, pools are, I would say, fairly common around the area we live in, uh, or getting more common. So, hey, I would could, say it's a, could we take a break here and all, and let him get home with his kids? Yeah, I was just trying to get a, a. I was just trying to get a four or against in case we didn't reconnect with him, but. Uh, um, sure. Yep. Right, yep we'll, talk to you to, we'll talk to you in a minute, James. Sounds good. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak to this item? Maria or Tony? Oh, Maria, did, Maria is with some, James, perhaps. We did have some written correspondence, and that's part of your packet as well. Did everybody have a chance to review those? There was a letter, uh, two letters in opposition of the request. Uh, from a Richard Dietrich. I'm not at, uh, I'm not sure what address they're at. Uh, they're up on Parkwood. Their address is Parkwood, so it'd be on the backside. And, do I, uh, do I have the opportunity and also, to the opposite uh, street? And also a letter from a Chris Siegelbauer. I'm not sure where they're at relative. She's the next door neighbor on the other side of the house. But um, do you have any comments or questions with regard to the opposition letters? Um, I do. If you have questions with regard to it, I do have some information to provide with regard to it um, to contradict any of the information. But I want to know if you have questions specifically to it to make sure I can speak accurately to your concerns. Anyone have any questions that arise from the letters of opposition that uh, you can direct to the petitioner? Um, not, nothing I can direct to the petitioner, no. All right. Well, I know we're waiting for James, but can, should, can we talk amongst ourselves, Ed, or do we just need to wait for James? No, we absolutely can talk amongst ourselves. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm home now, too, if you guys... Oh, are. okay. Okay. Um, Great. Go ahead and, and, and let us hear from you, Mr. Anderson. Yeah, th there's essentially not really much more. Um, I just think I really was just on to support the, the variance approval, um, kind of just based on uh, precedent. You know, the reality is it's already been set back here, and... This request is even less than that setback, so I don't see any reason why it shouldn't be requested or uh, you know approved. And you didn't even have to call on your credentials as a recreational expert. <laughs> well, that's a whole other thing, you know. If you're talking about pools and safety and stuff, I could promote our, our swim lessons, I guess, and our lifeguard uh, shortages right now. So <laughs> maybe okay. in that not for it because you know they're you know we need people to go to the pool in green bay so we can just I'll, get... I'll, I'll make a note that someone called him an expert but we'll we'll question that later <laughs> <laughs> is there anybody uh barb no i was just going to say in, in my comments about the the uh letters of post I, I just didn't see a nexus between the complaints that were offered that and the reasons why or why not we would make our decisions. So I, I could not see a nexus between the two. And I, I don't know if there's any wisdom the rest of you can give me on that, but. Um, I felt I, the same way, uh, Barb. I, I, I didn't see where the connection was. I realized that there's, 
there's other concerns that the uh, letter writers may have regarding uh, behavior and noise and that type of thing. And um, while I'm not immune to considering that, um, in this case, it doesn't affect my decision regarding the variance. I would agree. I would, Thank you. No. I would concur. I mean, uh, looking through the letters, I mean, it, it seems to me that those are those are different issues, uh, not in the purview of the board. And 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 just like Don said, uh, you know, I'm not immune to it, but it's also uh, uh, I, I don't think it's germane to this particular uh, discussion. Okay. The um, the the variance request in terms of the distance to the navigable waterway. Um, is one issue I did hear in, I mean, the, the, one of the letters they mentioned the appropriate way of setting up a pool or having it fenced or other things like that. I mean, assuming that any approval of the variance with regard to the location doesn't um, exempt the petitioner from having to comply with all municipal codes and regulations with regarding placement, safety, and operation of a swimming pool. Is that correct? Right. That's correct. A, a pool permit is required through our office. Yes, and it may include fencing as well. Yes, yeah, the, and the that's not our and that's not our business to deal with that. That'll be the petitioner and that and your department. Correct. Just out of curiosity, is fencing normally simply required for in ground pools for safety? The 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 code basically states that if the pool does exceed our does not exceed at least forty eight inches from the ground level, a fence is required. Um, the plan is that the pool will exceed that, be at or exceed that four foot measurement. Um, if it does not work out that way, we would have a, a fence which would be installed at the perimeter of the pool, uh, which was how the pool was constructed previously. Um, so basically just restricting access. Uh, the existing deck also has gated access with locks, uh, which we lock whenever it is not in use. Is there anybody? Any further discussion on this matter with the petitioner or anybody else who's spoken for or against this request? All right, then getting back to the members of the board, uh, any discussion amongst ourselves or any final questions for staff? I, I would be- Could I just point question. one thing out, Noel? Uh, for, in case the, the people, the rest of the board didn't look at the air photos on the uh, brown dog map, the property that's being considered for the variance request has had a pool since 2000 and probably before, as the applicant said. The pool has been there or there has been a, something in the same shape of a pool since before the Ziegelbauer's house was constructed and before the Diedrichs's house was constructed across the uh, putative waterway. So. Those people were aware of a pool, presumably at the time that they moved in. Ms. Ziegelbauer's comment that the previous owner of the uh, Bogenschutz property may have in, intruded on her property is, implies that it was done after she owned it is not true. That driveway was there in 2000 and Ms. Ziegelbauer was there was house was not even built at that time. Um, that's part of the reason why I'm discounting the concerns that she had. Everything concerning this pool would have been applicable before either the Ziegelbauers or the Diedrichs's uh, came into the neighborhood. Well done, Don. And it, it doesn't appear from the 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 aerial um, that the driveway encroaches on the adjacent property. It might like be really like, close, but yeah, it, it, was, like it was an existing situation before the rest of them came. Right. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll make a motion that um, our board approve the variance as requested by Mr. Bogenschutz. I'll second. There's a motion and a second to approve the variance as requested. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor and, say. I'd like to make one caveat. Noel, if I could. Go for it. Uh, let me just say outright that our approval of this variance, if that's what we do, is in no way um, 
implying that the comments made by the various neighbors regarding the behavior of people at the Bogan Shoots pool um, are not to be believed. We are just considering the situation as presented to us regarding the need for a variance. Fair enough. Tom, do you have any opposition to that being part of the motion? No, no as it stands. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. You have your variance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And have thank you for letting me in your yard. Oh, you're very welcome. And I didn't say a word. <laughs> you didn't. Very good. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. You too. Um, informational, we've got discussion on procedural items related to the Zoning and Planning Board of Appeals. Are, is there any business there? Paul, there is no business there. Paul, Nothing do you know who's report. going to be staffing this committee next month? I believe Stephanie will be filling in, but other staff may be here as well. Um, but I think Stephanie Hummel will be stepping in. Yes, you will be stuck with me for at least until we get another zoning administrator. So I'll do my best. Yay, Steph, you're always excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, our next meeting date is June 20th, 2022. Um, and I would um, um, entertain a motion to adjourn uh, and to thank uh, again, Don and Paul for their service not only to this board, but to this community um, for these many years. I echo that, Thank you. definitely. Thank you. This will be a real challenge though for the, re the board members. You've got a, an extreme turnover, a level I've never seen, even in the 15 years I was on the board. We're losing the administrator and three members, if you count um, um, Mr. Right. Babcock. And yep. so we've, you know, Steve and, and um, Barb, especially, it's going to be, it's going to be a challenge to help Noel and Tommy and Tom to accomplish all the things. But my impression is that the board is as good, a, is in as good a shape um, and is as competent as I've ever seen it. And I look forward to uh, its progress. Yep. Well, I think consideration of this stuff in good faith and and asking lots of questions is is the best way to get the job done right yep all right thank you all i'd entertain a motion to adjourn don it's got to be you come on so moved all right <laughs> Second yet. motion by don carlson to adjourn all those in favor say bye bye bye, bye. 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 have fun <laughs> <laughs>